What's up, everybody? I'm Sniggenhoff, and we're back playing M&T 2.0 as Muscovy. In the last episode, I don't quite remember what happened, because I uh, have been, it's been a few days since I played. But I'm pretty sure, I know we won a war. Probably we won the war with Ryzan in the last episode. In this episode, we're going to consider going to war with Novgorod over the province of Volok Lamsky. Um, but here's the problem. First of all, they're allied with one of my allies in Kiev. And Novgorod currently has more troops than I do and more manpower. Oh no, I have a little bit more troops than they do, but they have more manpower. Um, so I'm not sure I quite want to go to war with them right now. Maybe you want to pick on one of these other smaller nations, like Tver or, you know, Tarusa. Somebody like that. Um, might be a bit of a better idea. Also... The White Horde took Nizhny Novgorod, which was a big old 12 development province, uh, which is a little unfortunate. And Novgorod is dealing with some peasants up here in the north right now, so maybe it'd be a good time to go to war with them, but I don't think so. So let's go ahead and unpause and look around a little bit. How's that sound? Um, I think I can go to war with anyone around here with the Unify Russia. Um, CB, which is nice. Let me drop my army maintenance down. I can't core these yet because of they are still underneath martial law, and I'm not sure when that's going away. We have lost the effects of plentiful manpower, unfortunately. Um, I don't think I want to use my money on this quite yet. How much money am I making? A little bit? Yeah, I think I'll hold off on hiring any more advisors as well. I could take this next quantity idea, but I think I want to wait until I get Military Tech 6 to get ahead of the curve a little bit. And also this quantity idea is just, it's cavalry cost minus 5%, which would be nice, don't get me wrong, but it's not something I'm really worried about right now, and I don't even think I have any cavalry at the moment. No, I just have the five hopsites. Hospites. And we're back to having plentiful manpower, so there's that. Our corruption is growing. We are rooting it out as much as much as we can, but it's still growing. It's up to three at this point. And our inflation is growing because of gold mines. I'm not making any money from gold. Oh no, it's not it's not from that. It's probably from the estates and whatnot. How is my education doing it's still dropping national education multiplier let's increase the funding a little bit more It'll probably cause me to start losing some money, but I'd like my education to be up higher. I think. It seems like a good thing. And do I still have the mission to... No, I'm trying to make Sweden like me. Am I improving with Sweden right now? Yes. Yes, I am. Unfortunately, I may have to do some other things because it's only up to plus 27. Thanks to our monetary benefits, we can increase our colonial growth. Very good. Okay, sweet. Extra global settler increase. Historical rival. That's not great. And tolerated heretics. Yeah, I have no clue when martial law falls off. Or if I have to do something to make it fall off. We will see, though. My legitimacy is dropping because I'm in a regency. Which also isn't great. What's my max main power? 77.15? Oh, so we're almost there. Um, what else do I want to think about doing? Karashev has no allies. Let's come back from here. Wonder if I could just go take out them really quick. Oh, 
Not that button. Declare war. Russian unification. Lithuania would come in on promise of territory, but I don't want to give them any territory. And I don't think I really need it. Oh, I'd be breaking a truce, though. Yeah, I don't want to do that. I have a truce for another three years with them. Okay. Voritnitsk Vor also does not have any allies. Would not be breaking a truce. Let's go ahead and raise our maintenance. We'll just take what we can get, you know? Where we can get it. Especially against people who don't have allies. I'm still a little scared of the White Horde over here. But, I mean, Lithuania and Kiev backing us up may be enough. Let's just, you know, just for... Uh, just for argument's sake, let's just see, um, let's just see how many troops Fort White Horde has. Do I not get to see? White Horde only has 5,000 troops and a force limit of 4. Okay. We got a claim on Voloklamsky. Glorious will Muscovy be. That's great. I'll certainly take that. I wonder if I could just like threaten war against them. Get them to give it to me. Doesn't look like it. Wait one more month, then I will declare. They do have a solid amount of troops for just being a one province miner. Are they just a one province miner? Should probably make sure of that. Looks like it. All right. Do do you believe? I believe. Um, and then do I want to go in? No, not demand support. Offensive war support. I don't think I need much. I could just like organize a noble council. Yeah, that seems fine. Yeah, that should be fine. May not have even needed to do that, to be honest. Ooh, we have a lot more morale than they do. They did get some condottieri from Novgorod, which isn't great. So I may need to call in the lesser noble support. And battles really slow it down, don't they? Stack wipe would be great. No, no stack wipe, of course. Um, friendlies can attach. And you guys are both on supportive. Looting policy. Uh, let them loot. Should be fine. They're going in, a, going in on that. Let's see if I can jump in to help them. Maybe get a stack wipe here. Hey, we got the stack wipe. Renaissance influences in Muscovy, spreading a, spreading from Italy and across Europe. The cultural rebirth of the ancient Greeks and Romans brings with it new ways of thinking about the world we live in. This, they give us a new understanding of how we relate to other people, in ways, in ways that change in ways that change politics as much as it changes art. Uh, while encompassing a multitude of cultural movements expressed in a multitude of ways in different places, there are few sire tenets bringing continuity... Continu continu continuity? I was like, I know how to say this word. To our cultural age. The blossoming of the Renaissance will be felt over time. Okay. Uh, am I just going to have to leave somebody... there. 
I want I want this to get taken back. Thank you, please. All right, let's all pile up here and just get this get this siege done and just ignore the Novgorodian troops. I think that's the best idea, especially since we're ahead in the race right now anyway. And we have a wall breach. Sweet. Although it would be a nice chance to go and take out the Nov Novgorodians. Maybe I'll go try to fight them once. Alright, and I am only at 19% overextension. Head in the race. Let's not lose it, please. There we go. Uh, we'll just leave him alone for now. Just give me that. Give me all your money. He's fine. Uh, a tenth to the treasury. Treasury is fine. And let's lower maintenance back down. Okay. You have allies. You don't have allies. So when your truce comes up here, I may want to attack you. That's my vassals. This is Novgorod's. You are allied to Terusa and Belazero. That's Belazero. Rostov's that guy. You have no allies. That could be an interesting war to go after right now. But I don't want to take on too much overextension. For sure. And am I still like locked from being able to use any of my merchants? I can't collect here. I mean, you could collect from here, but I don't think that's going to do anything. How am I doing on uh, vassals? 25 years. I can't do any. I can't negotiate tighter bonds with him right now. Centralizes state. Stability increase. Stability increase. Stability increase. I don't think I need the stability increase policies right now. I wonder if this would be good, though. Is there anywhere that tells me what the absolutionism does? Centralization. Extra national unrest. Lowered trade modifier. Increased stability increase. So it would get less stability. Yearly inflation reduction. Trade power abroad. Extra land force limit. Extra fort maintenance, but lowered state maintenance. Lowered tech cost. Increased core creation cost. Increased income from vassals. Lowered monthly and autonomy change. Lowered uh, max promoted cultures and raised liberty desire. Okay, so I'm 25 away from getting that mission done with Sweden. Uh, can I send you a gift that will bump you up by 25? No. That's probably an annoying noise. I apologize. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that. Let's cancel the mission. And have you have one person start improving with those guys. Uh, 
And I'm going to war with these guys two years from now. And then you are a vassal of Lithuania, so I can't really do anything with you. And you are a vassal of Lithuania, so I can't really do anything with you. Okay. War of the Roses has spawned. Should be interesting. What else to do? I mean, just declaring war on the White Horde, obviously. Although we have found out that they don't have a ton of troops. Or at least they didn't before. White Horde. Five, still 5k. So their whole army is right here. And they're fighting against Novosil and Terusa. Novosil. And then Terusa is over here somewhere, I think. Or is this Terusa? No, that's Klizma. This is Terusa. I can take tech. I would like to take tech. Okay, so we just enabled a bunch of different peoples. Either flag infantry for huge shock damage and pretty good defensive morale as well, or just completely balanced. I actually kind of like this flag infantry. Didn't it show something else as well? Clerical shortage. Our religious leaders are complaining of shortage of clerics to fill vacant positions in Muscovy. Increasingly, it appears that people are not attracted to the rigorous rigors of religious life, and the best and the brightest are abandoning the ecclesiastical jobs in favor of secular ones. The root of the problem is simple, though. The people no longer consider the Orthodox faith to be central to their lives. Already, our religious leaders are taking measures to deal with it, hiring foreign priests to work in Moscow and encouraging peasants to take up holy vows, but they warn us that we should expect expect to face years of shortages of talent among our clergy. Concentrate on shepherding the faithful, so we lose a missionary, which is fine. We lose missionary strength, which is fine, because uh, we don't have anything to convert right now. And then we use, lose yearly prestige for 14 years, or national unrest, stability increase, and yearly legitimacy. I think I'm going to take this one. I mean... It's all orthodox. Everything we're wanting to convert, to conquer, is orthodox. Until, we don't need to worry about missionaries and missionary strength until we turn our attentions to the White Horde, so. Oh, I can make cores now. I can make them all into cores now. I would like to do that. I would like to do that very much. And maybe by doing that, I'll be able to get, uh, I think I'm gonna take the flag infantry. And then, yeah, those guys as well. I also saw something about Serbian infantry, and it was highlighted in blue. Maybe that's like a special type of merc. Or it's uh, something else that has nothing to do with me. One of those two, probably. Upgrade roads, upgrade forts. bank we are making the slightest bit of money which is nice workshop marketplace mining complex I'm trying to just look at the buildings I'm not even sure what to do with them uh, and I should send this guy out to do something. Have I improved as much as I can with the horde? Yes. Yes, I have. What about with Livonia over here? They seem like somebody to improve with. And I have one merchant available that I still can't use, I believe. Still two more years. And I can take Diplotech. And I don't think I don't want to do it, so... Extra colonial range, extra trade range, trade efficiency, settler growth increased, can now build a trade dockland. Uh, base urban gravity goes up, urban gravity modifier goes up, rural and urban wealth growth goes up. Yeah, that all seems good. Bohemia got re-elected as the emperor. And... Is 
now 1364. Oh, I haven't paused. My bad. Still growing corruption, huh? Half a year. Part of it's because of the Regency as well. What does the next tech of admin get me? Just number of states. That is it. Okay. And I get my next idea group at admin tech 8. And I think now that I've gotten military tech 6... Oh, um, Novgorod has no military tech 6 as well. Uh... I may start trying to finish that quantity idea group. Corrupt bureaucracy. How, how can we run a nation when our own bureaucracy diverts the tax money before they arrive in our coffers? Not good. And we we get minus 2.5 national tax modifier. I wonder if that's like set to go off whenever you get above 3 corruption, or if it was just a random event. Um, Is there any decisions... Decentralize to stabilize. Pursue religious tolerance, I don't think I need. I don't think I need that either. I didn't know if there was anything maybe to like lower corruption, but it doesn't look like it. I mean, I could go in here and try to demote them. Like take away their some of their stuff. But they would have to lose. No, I don't want to do that. I do not want to do that. Or is it... There's a way to take away their privileges, and I don't remember how to do it. I think there's a way to take away their privileges, that is. But we will figure that out on the next episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button down below. As well as subscribe to the channel and hit me with a comment. Um... Ooh, wow. England has done some stuff over here to France. Do you think France will survive? Do you think they'll make it? Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.